It's time to level up your dashboards and make them pop. Today I'm going to show you my top five custom cards. But first, let's roll the intro. First up is the state switch. If you've never heard about the state switch, I'm going to show you what it actually does. It allows you to dynamically replace Lovelace cards automatically. There's two ways you can do this. You can either do this automatically with the time of day, or if someone leaves the house or comes back, or you can use an input selector you can see in this example over here. Let me show you how you can do with the input selector. First of all, go to configuration, scroll down, go to helpers, click add helper and add a drop down helper. Give the drop down helper a name. I call my one zone and I created two zones in my home, a ground floor and a first floor. Now jump back to hacks, Go to front end, click add and explore repositories, search for the state switch, install the repository in hacks and you're good to go. Now you can search for it and you should find it over here. You gotta find some of my examples in my blog as usual. Now jump back into your dashboard, add your input controller over here. It's really powerful if you just click on the input selector and just change the value. You can see immediately that the card's changing. And you can add any cards that you want. You can also add grid cards, which is what I'm doing over here. And let me show you the code that says behind this. The type of card is custom state dash switch. The entity ID that I'm using to control the switch is the input selector that you want to use. So over here, you can pick any sensor or anything you want to have these cards change. So you could have a motion sensor, for example, and base if there's motion in the room or not, you can just change the, the card. Now, if you remember from my previous videos, if you haven't watched them, I'll link them in the description down below. I've been talking a lot about YAML and how YAML works. The main thing to understand is that your states, which means every single state that you're tracking for, so if it's a motion sensor on or off, but if it's an input selector, it could be anything that you've put in that text box. So you need to type them in exactly as you've typed them in previously. And that, remember those two uh, blank spaces, type in ground and underground, you can just copy and paste a different card that you had already. Then from line 11, you can see first. Now first, scroll down and it's a little bit longer. The reason why is because just because it's a grid card. So after first, we have our two spaces again, and then we have type grid, and then we have all of the code that I generated previously when I was doing a grid card. So what I would advise you guys to do is, is create the, the two cards separately. You can do that with the visual editor. And then what you will do is, you will just uh, create this code maybe on, in a text editor and then copy it and paste it in as a manual card. If you think the state switch is cool, remember to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for many more home assistant tips. The second custom card that I really love is the button card. So we don't really have a standard button card in home assistant, but this is so much better in terms of the customization and you can do a hell of a lot of things on it. You can see the link here to the GitHub repository and I'm gonna leave these all in the blog as usual. One cool use case of the button card is that you can use it as a slideshow. So you can have two images. So for example, you can have a Netflix logo and a Plex logo just rotating. You can have snapshots from your cameras like motions. For all hacks cards, the installation process is the same. If you skip through the video and you missed the state switch, go back and watch how I've done that. I'm using a custom button card. The aspect ratio is one by one. And here I have the extra code that I'm using to the swap. So you can see that we have a zero to 100% concept. So, and then it will start looping again. So 0%, we having, we got one image, which is the Netflix PNG. I'm keeping it longer. So I'm keeping it from 0%, 25%. We have the same image. And then we have Plex, Plex, and then it ends with Netflix. So this local is the www folder in your home assistant. So you can upload any PNG you want and just reference the right name. Here you can see the difference between the normal button card and the custom button card. On the right hand side, you can see the normal button card over here. And on the left hand side, the custom one. What is the main difference? Well, you can see that the colors are swapped. So the custom button card allows you to do these things like, well, color the background instead of coloring the uh, internal of the icon. And that is one of the many customizations that you can do with button cards. Bad card that I love a lot is the graph card. Primarily, you'll be doing either line charts or bar charts. Let me show you two examples. You can see over here on my screen, I have the temperature of the outdoors and landing and the bedroom temperature. So if you see, I've got three values. So if I only hover on one, I have one value. Landing, I can see the difference between the landing and the bedroom. At a certain time, this was the current temperature, it was six degrees. But 
inside in the bedroom it was 19 degrees. Over here you can see an example of a smart switch and you can see when it was actually on and how much energy it was consuming. It's super simple to use, let me show you right now. Type is custom mini graph card, give it a name, you can give it an icon. So under entities you can add several entities, I've got three as you can see and then you just put in the entity ID of the sensor and then really really recommend putting in a name because if not you just can have this long name in the legend and it's just going to not look good. The bar chart actually is slightly different. I'm using this show um, graph property and I'm just indicating bar. So in that way you can actually use it with a bar. Now if you've watched my video about the media dashboard you know this one already is coming. My fourth favorite Home Assistant custom card is the mini player. Let me show you an example. What are the things you can actually customize? Well, for the cover. Let's talk about the cover, the artwork. So you can change cover for, to full cover. If you save it, here you can see a big wall out of a song. So if you change this and you just put material, just keep on going and you can see all over here. Now we have a power button, we have a play back button. Those are all familiar but you can do more. For example, you can disable the power button if you don't want it. You can go down and you can set up the volume step and the maximum volume, the minimum volume. You can replace the mute. You can do all sorts of things. I love it set up as cover. Personally, I really like to have the volume. I don't want to have the volume sliders, so I keep this off. The power button, I normally keep it off too. I do like grouping cards because I might have multiple media, mini media players, one on top of the other. And a really cool thing is this, I think this is one of the only ones so far at the time of recording that you can actually use a visual editor to modify instead of going back in back to the code. But you can just switch to it and you can see you can customize it. And once you've saved it, you can see it rendered over here. The fifth custom card that I really, really love is a surveillance card. Now this one was slightly glitchy at the beginning but I think I've got it to work. This is one card with all of your cameras inside and then you can put motion sensors that link to the camera. So I have a motion sensors that are within the camera itself or you can get another motion sensor. And what you can do basically is say, if there is motion in this zone that I'm watching with the camera, I want that to be the primary image. I can also manually toggle through the camera so I can pick a different camera to be the primary one then I can do also snapshots like photo or video. I think this is a bit of a time saver, especially if you have a lot of cameras. And if you would like me to do actual a security dashboard specific, let me know in the comment section down below. Custom surveillance card is the type. The interval in which this switches automatically, if you want to have it switching automatically, you can set that up all over here. Cameras, you can have a camera with no motion sensor or you can have them with them. So the parking bay, for example, camera has a binary sensor integrated in it. This is a real link camera. Then I can leverage the motion sensor within it, but you could pick any motion sensor, even if it wasn't in the device itself, which I think is very powerful. Now, if you want to learn a lot about more dashboards, automations, home assistant, NAS, then you can join my smart home membership. Link in the description down below. You can either go for a lifetime bundle or you can pick individual courses or you can go with a monthly subscription. You're gonna find a coupon code in the description down below. Now copy and paste it because I'm gonna be removing this coupon code soon, as soon as this offer expires. This offer is only valid for this Black Friday weekend, so I hope you're gonna enjoy it. But right here on YouTube, you can watch this next video with 12 Home Assistant Pro tips that will jumpstart your Home Assistant journey from a noob to a pro. This was Geo from Smart Makers. See you on the next one, ciao.